Hello and thanks for joining us here on Encore. Coming up on today's show. The face of modern South Africa, an icon of the 20th century. Nelson Mandela's story has been told many times and it's still inspiring artists after his death. Now on the centenary of his birth, a musical here in Paris celebrates the man known as Madiba. To tell us more, I'm joined by actor Jean-Louis Garçon and Madiba's grandson himself, Ndaba Mandela. Jean-Louis Ndaba, thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having us. Jean-Louis, you have one of the leading roles in this musical, and it's not just anyone. You play a young Nelson Mandela. Before you said yes to that role, what did Mandela mean to you as a man? Um, I know I knew him as uh, what I had seen from him uh, in the media. So my, one of my first memories was the day of his release. Uh, I remember my parents clapping in the house and uh, cheering and I discovered the first black hero, I think, as a kid. So a significant figure then. And Ndaba, you've given the show your blessing as a member of the family, yes. judging it to be you know, uh, true to, to the memory of your grandfather. Growing up, what was your most vivid memories of him? Well, I think one of those memories was when I visited him the first time in jail. Um, you know, it was nothing like the jail that I had in mind. It was actually a house, a better house than the one I lived in. And that was the first time I actually had uh, an idea of what I wanted to grow up. You know, most kids want to be a policeman or a soldier. But I told myself, when I grow up, I want to go to jail uh, because of what I experienced on that day, you know. So that was one of the memories that I'll never forget. That's quite a unique experience as a grandson. Now, coming back to the show, let's take a look at a preview of Madiba. This is them in rehearsal. And Jean-Louis, we see you there taking on this role of someone who you said you'd seen in the media. He was already known around the world. Were you nervous about playing someone so well-known and so well-loved? Honestly, at first, very nervous. And then I, I said to myself, if you're nervous, I think that's your ego talking. So get rid of it. And now I'm OK. <laughs> and how did you prepare for that? Uh, I've read uh, A Long Walk to Freedom. I've read it's, it's a Bible. I have uh, all of... Uh, Nelson Mandela's thoughts in the book um, and then I've tried to study how he walks, how he talks, his rhythm, how he breathes, uh, stuff like that. So it's um, quite scientific. Now there, yes. is, there is an extra layer I think of pressure for both actors and those behind the scenes in creating this kind of show, portraying a real person. We asked Madiba's director Pierre-Yves Duchesne about taking on that challenge. The difficulty of adapting a biopic, particularly about someone so well-known, is avoiding cliches, what people already know, what's already been done. We've tried to portray Mandela's universal message through music and use the music to avoid it becoming just a straight history lesson. Both the music and the drawings of Jean-Pierre Adida lead us on some very artistic departures after all. Madiba himself used to say that the world is nothing without song, the world is nothing without music. So Ndaba, we heard that uh, Mandela said that music and dancing allowed him to feel at peace with the world. Do you remember your grandfather having a particular love for the arts? Yes, he did. Um, you know, he was a person that loved choral music, and um, I think everybody knows that he had a special dance that they named the Madiba dance, <laughs> and he really showed this whenever he was happy in a jovial mood. Um, it was just a little shuffle with the hands, you know, going back to forth. Uh, as you can imagine, an old man can't really move that much, but uh, he was really become the, the man of the nation through the Madiba dance, so yeah. 
A lover of arts and culture, that's what we like. Well, apart from the musical spectacular element of the show, there's also a strong message at the heart of it. Let's hear from the show's co-writer, Jean-Pierre Adida. We have to spread his message. We have to keep spreading it because it's fragile. We saw in South Africa recently that tensions are rising again. We have to remind people that it's possible and that other messiahs like Nelson Mandela are always there when things are going very badly. We should bear this message in mind. What we wanted to do, which had never been done before, was to put it to music, which is a universal language. It touches everyone, children, people of all ages, culture and religions. So through music and dance, we wanted to create this epic saga about Nelson Mandela's life in parallel with a love story. And in terms of what the show's trying to communicate, what would you say is the most important message? love each other, live together, um, let your brain win over your emotions. Mm -hmm. That's what I would say. Yeah, I would definitely say love, unity, um, tolerance uh, comes across very, very strong. Um, yeah, that's really what it's about. Mm -hmm. Now, Jean-Louis, in the play, there are two other characters who are dealing with a situation in which mixed-race relationships are illegal under apartheid law. That's not the case in the place and time that you grew up in, in France. Was it very difficult to relate to that context? Yes and no. Um, I, I've read uh, Dry White Season um, to to emerge myself into the, the, that time and the, and the, and. and the difficulties that uh, mixed couples could uh, could embrace. So no, I didn't have a lot of trouble uh, um, embracing and understanding this uh, this mm -hmm. problem. Well, it does seem a world away, but it has been almost 24 years since those apartheid laws uh, were lifted in South Africa. That was a democratic shift that Nelson Mandela was deeply involved in. And Daba, how do you see his legacy today in the country? Well, you know, today. We have a country that obviously is, you know, looking at a new sort of uh, dispensation. Um, and when you look at the younger generation, you can see that they no longer look at each other along racial lines. You know, there's no more so much prejudice anymore. Uh, people are trying to rebuild. Um, and I think he has also given South Africa that sort of hope to create a better South Africa, uh, not built along racial lines, but according to, you know, what people really want um, to achieve in the country, which is a better life for everybody who lives in it. Now, you followed in the footsteps of your grandfather and are involved in social advocacy uh, with the creation of the Africa Rising Foundation. In what way does that carry his vision forward? Well, of course, you know, one of his uh, major things was to not only see a a racial-free uh, South Africa, but to see actually the empowerment of young Africans, both male and female. And so although, you know, <clears throat> I always say typically our grandfather broke the physical chains, but now it is up to us as the next generation to break the mental chains that exist. So we in our foundation really focus on education, technology and entrepreneurship because this is the next sort of, um, you know, a journey for us and be able to be seen as contributors in the world, you know, not consumers, but contributors on the world stage and be seen as equals when it comes to the global uh, economy. And do you think that work could uh, take you to politics one day? Well, um, yeah, I don't do it for that, but uh, I do it because this is something that I truly believe in. As you know, our history, black people were marginalized, and so there's a huge gap that exists uh, between the black and the white community. So I feel like it's my responsibility to, to do as much as I can to make sure our people uh, get to a level playing field. Mm -hmm. And Jean-Louis, just a final word. How would you say this show has contributed to your understanding of modern South Africa? Um, I would say that um, my understanding of the South Africa, how it's now, mm. I, I would say that um, Nelson Mandela has planted the seeds for people to get free from their chains, as uh, Ndaba just said. Um, I think now the power is in the hands of the, the new generations and uh, the, the, the hardest part has been already done by Nelson Mandela. Indeed. Jean-Louis Ndaba, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.
Madiba will be on tour across France in April and May, starting at the Olympia here in Paris. We'll leave you with a little more from that show. Remember, you can get more arts and culture on our website. You can also keep up with Encore on social media too. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this. Dans le ghetto de Soweto.